Hi, I'm David Gross with Condi Systems, back with you to share a little bit of my wisdom for sublimation success. Today's video is about proper technique for pressing Chromalux panels. Now, why do we need a special procedure for doing Chromalux? Well, if you're not familiar with Chromalux, it's really a viral sublimation substrate that has incredible quality. In the photographic industry, it's just been amazingly successful. Well, the Chromalux panels have some special characteristics and they cause the sublimation process some problems. And we're going to talk about how to get around those problems. Many other substrates, you really don't have to worry about these issues. But there's something unique about the Chromalux metal, and that is it has a really thick polyester sublimatable coating. And this big coating, this really thick coating, is what gives Chromalux its HD quality. And if you think about it, uh, when you sublimate into a substrate, the sublimation dyes really live in the coating. That's where they are. Well, as light comes into the metal, it's going to hit that sublimation dyes and it's going to bounce back to your eye but also some light hits the back of the metal and comes out as well. Well, when your eye sees that, guess what? It gives it a little bit of color depth or a 3D look. So that's part of the secret recipe to why Chromalux looks so good. The coating is just really optically clear. The colors are super bright. But because that coating is so thick, it can hold a lot of moisture. So when you sublimate, guess what? That moisture comes out of the coating and it turns into steam. And steam is the great arch enemy of sublimation. So we need to use some special techniques. Now, for small pieces of metal, you're probably not going to encounter many problems because your surface area is very small. But as the piece of metal gets larger and larger and larger, the techniques that we're going to talk about today are critically important for your success. And so it all starts, of course, with a good transfer. Now, I recommend for Chromalux uh, metal and for hard substrates in general, our Ditrans paper. Our Ditrans paper really has incredibly sharp dots, meaning very, very minimal dot gain. Um, it also is very dimensionally stable. So as the piece gets bigger or whatever, you hit it with heat, it's not going to change in size. And so we're going to walk through each step of how I do Chromalux and I hope this will be successful to you. So the first thing is we're going to put our um, uh, cover paper on the bottom and I buy my cover paper at Sam's Club. Um, it's, it's uncoated white butcher paper, very inexpensive. Um, the next step is going to be a little weird. I recommend that you take a couple of minutes and you dry your transfer. Why? Well, what we're printing uh, the transfer with is essentially colored water, okay? And so we really need those, those, that ink to be dry. So it's sort of like paint, you know, the top surface can be dry, but if you put your finger in L in it, guess what? Underneath it, it's really not. So the, the easy way to dry is just simply put it over here and, you know, put your press over it without closing it, of course, for, you know, 10 seconds and you're going to be done, all right? And that's all there is to it. It's very easy. Uh, the next step is to remove the peel coat off our metal. Now, you know, some people struggle with this. Some people try off different techniques. But the bottom line is you need to take it off. Um, and so we're going to take it off here. And we're done. Now, as a bonus today, and this is really cool, uh, I'm going to teach you a trick about uh, what I do when I do my Chromalux. Um, and that is, uh, we're going we're gonna to sublimate on the back side of the metal um, the reorder information. So the back side of the metal doesn't have the same coating, but there's enough there where it looks pretty good. And, and that's a great way for you to put your signature out there so that whoever gets this product knows where it comes from, so hey, guess what? They can call you up and order more. So we simply put it down here, and of course you want to make sure you're on the, that the side, the, the good sublimation side is down. 
and I give a good, little bit of bleed here, so it's good, good. And now what we're going to do is this is my extra information that I'm going to sublimate on the back side. I'm simply going to make a fold here, nice fold. And then I'll put a piece of tape right here, piece of tape right here. And then uh, we'll put a couple of more pieces over in different areas right there. We'll put our last piece of tape on and we're ready to go to the press. So you might ask, how are we going to sublimate this, this back here? And that is that metal is the only substrate that conducts heat well enough to allow us to sublimate to both sides at the same time like dog tags and other products are, are examples of that. So we're going to go ahead and put it in our press here like this. And again, um, this on the bottom, the uh, metal face up, transfers face down. Now the real secret um, to the change in Chromalux pressing technique is to put fabric on top. And we've got a couple of fabrics that we really like around here. You can contact your Condi rep and we can tell you uh, what we're recommending today. But what's the purpose of the fabric? Well, as the moisture starts coming off here, this fabric, in, in my opinion, my understanding, it acts as an uncompressible vent to allow moisture to escape instead of being pooled into one place. And by letting it escape, it's not going to hurt us. It's not going to be a problem. Now, typically in, in my lab where I do a lot of my sublimation, I've got a piece of fabric that I have used before that, that I've used for a particular size of metal. So um, after the fabric is used, you're going to see creases in it. You just use that fabric again for, for this piece of this size metal. So I've got one of that. And after the fabric starts getting nasty, um, you throw it away. And, and just get you another piece of fabric. I, I, you know, obviously fabric is fairly inexpensive. So um, one thing I, I failed to mention, and I'm, I apologize, um, as you know I have a bad case of ADD, is that a few people have told me in their labs that they really, the air is not as clean as it needs to be, that there's a lot of dust um, in the air, and while they're, you know, doing their sublimation, there may be other things going on that also uh, put particulates in the air. So a few people have told me that their standard procedure is to do a little spray, you know, and just make sure there's no dust and debris. Well, you know, if I did the video over, we would, we would do this step right before we put the transfer paper. We do a little mist to the paper to make sure there's no dust, mist to there. Um, in our facility, we have a real, relatively clean facility. We try to keep it really clean, change the filters, um, keep things out of the lab that would put particulates in the air, and so um, we're pretty good there. So now we're ready to press. Now typically we press Chromalux at 400 degrees. It is really important, as I've said in earlier videos, that you actually calibrate your press, that you know where you're at. Um, occasionally on, on presses that are extremely powerful, um, we might bump the temperature down. Now think of uh, presses as stoves. You know, you got little burners on stoves, you got big burners on stoves. Where they're at the same temperature, but you know that bigger, uh, bigger burner is going to cook your food faster. So if you put too much heat into a Chromalux panel, especially the, the white ones, you absolutely can cause that coating to pop off. And so you just need to back down your, your uh, temperature because you're putting way too much heat into that Chromalux. Um, so it's reported. So generally it's 400 degrees. Time, look for the time posted on our instructions according to the size. And, and one of the most important things is keep you a log of your successes and failures. I can't tell you how important that is to document what is working for you. And then when you need to call us, <clears throat> you've got good documentation about what's gone wrong, what are the symptoms, so that we can do a better job of helping you. Uh, typically pressure on a manual press, we want good, firm, two-handed press. Um, if you have a pneumatic press, the more pressure, usually the better. Um, so we're going to swing it over, we're going to press it. 
um, and you can watch me and I think we've got some other videos that show you some really good pressure techniques. And so we're going to close it and we're going to wait for it to count down. And that sound means we're roll, we're finished. So we're going to go ahead and open it and we'll swing it over. And obviously be very careful. Um, the press is, is going to be very hot. So we're going to throw our, our fabric over and you can see a little bit of the indention that we made. And now we're going to take everything off the press. And I like to move things off the press gently and, and nicely um, as soon as we're finished uh, for the simple reason, you know, I want to get ready for the next one. Now, uh, in my lab, I have a nice uh, piece of metal that I'll put stuff onto. I even have a little cool plate that's quite valuable with cooling things quickly. And, and you know, cooling things quickly is, is a good thing because, hey, um, you know, when it's cool, it can't really do anything strange. But while it's still hot, um, guess what? A lot, of, a lot of strange things can happen. So we're going to go ahead and peel it off. Obviously, be very careful. Um, with the uh, metal and um, I'll turn it towards the camera but um, obviously we've got a absolutely fantastic print almost sort of a metallic um, look in the colors um, just absolutely gorgeous but let's go ahead and flip it over and we're going to look at the back side for the magic on the back and um, I think that is just super cool super cool so we'll turn it around here to the camera um, and so this is just a almost free way for you to put your signature um, on these products to let people know where they came from. And of course, if you're you know following some of my suggestions for wholesale fulfillment, what would be there would be the name of the company that you're selling to. So it's just a great way. Um, you know, photo photographers love um, having. Um, um, somewhat of a signature um, on, on all their products. A couple of closing remarks. First is read our instructions. We're always updating our instructions to improve the process and, and improve the quality of the output. Number two is the fabric choices are always changing a little bit as we try different fabrics and we've got some good choices now. So contact your Condi rep so that you can find out what we're recommending today. And third, as a bonus to our, our folks out there, our Condi clients, we'll even throw in a, your first piece of fabric at no charge to ship with your, your existing order. So I welcome your comments. Um, I learn a lot from our, our clients out there, and so please uh, send me an email. I'm at dgross at condi.com, and I look forward to helping you. Till we meet again, thank you. There are so many videos for you to watch, we don't want you to miss out on a single one. So click here to subscribe to Condi TV on our video channel. Click here to like us on Facebook so you don't miss out on anything. And click here to visit this product's webpage.